Now that we have a complete backup of our website, let's talk about backup storage. The first rule of backups is to always keep your backups in three distinct locations aside from your web host, even if your web host keeps backups for you. One of these places can be your local computer, another should be some remote storage location, and the third place could be a separate remote location or locally on an external hard drive separate from your computer. You may think three backup locations is overkill, but I promise you, I actually have a friend who kept his site backups in only two locations, and when his site went kaput one day, he tried to grab one of his backups and had both of his backup locations fail on him. If this happens to you, all of the time you've put into your website is wiped out. So, we have one backup location already, our local computer that we've been saving stuff to throughout this tutorial. For our second location, let's go with a remote location on Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is a cheap and effective solution, and they offer a ton of space to save backups and other files. So go to aws.amazon.com, and you will probably see a page that looks similar to this. If you don't have an account already, where you see the sign into the console button on my screen, you'll probably have something that says register. Go ahead and do that. It's pretty quick and painless. And once you have an Amazon Web Services account, you'll come back to this page and click sign in to the console. Then you'll get this page that probably looks a little bit intimidating, but just go to find the storage and content delivery section and click on S3, Scalable Storage in the Cloud. Here, if you don't have a bucket already, which is basically a place for you to store things, you'll need to create a bucket. You'll have to give it a unique name that no one else has. And once you've done that, you'll select that bucket by clicking on it. And this is where you can upload files. Here, we can simply upload. So we'll click on Actions, Upload, let's do Add Files, or rather, let's use the drag and drop functionality to keep our folder intact and make sure that all stays together the exact way we want it. I'm just going to grab this 2015 12 14 folder, drag it right there, click Start Upload. So as you can see, I had a slight uh, hiccup with my internet connection just as this was finishing, so I missed two files. But in most cases, you should be perfectly fine and 100% of everything should be uploaded. Also, we should note that if we take a look in this folder that we sent to backup, we included our entire public HTML directory unpacked. In most cases, you're not going to do that. We had unpacked this in the tutorial, so we could just take a look and see that it looks exactly like the normal Drupal root directory, but in most cases you're just going to have the tar.gz file and your SQL file, and you're not going to worry about uploading this entire unpacked public HTML directory the way we did this time. I should also note here that you can write scripts or create cron tasks that automatically back up your site and send it to your Amazon services location without you doing anything. But that is a bit more advanced than we're going to get in this tutorial. For us, we're going to be happy taking a few minutes once a week to download our backups manually and send them to our AWS storage as well as a third location. Now, we're not going to cover the third location here because it'll be pretty much a matter of just uploading the files somewhere else or copying them to an external hard drive. But once again, keep in mind, always keep them in three places other than your web host, somewhere local, somewhere remote, and then a second remote or another local location, such as an external hard drive. Finally, as we create more and more weekly backups of our site, let's take a look at our folder. We will keep them in well-organized folders, and we want to keep weekly backups for as far back as is reasonable, given the storage that we have, and we want to have monthly backups pretty much indefinitely, as far back as we can go. It may happen that you discover that your site was hacked 6, 12, or 24 months ago, 
And if you don't have a backup from before that time, there's no sure way to restore your site in a 100% safe state. So even if you need to start clearing out room for new backups, always keep some backups going back more or less indefinitely.